Hey, welcome everybody. Um, this, uh, this session I think probably came about from some of the work that I have done with Agri Women's, uh, where, and I, I speak on a course called Understanding Your Farming Business. And often a question I get asked is, who's a good farm accountant? You know, like I can just go out there, anywhere from Invercargill to Kaikoui, and sort of grab a good farm accountant and slot it to this person and, you know, life will be sweet. Um, and that will take five minutes, you know, but this talk's 30 or 40. So it's a bit broader than that, so I want to kind of expand it out. And what I thought I'd do is just throw it back to you and say, who are our business partners? You know, for those of you you've chosen this session, who are you thinking um, about when we talk about business partners? Bankers? <coughs> who else? Lifestyle buyers. Stock, so stock agents? Yeah. Staff. Who else? Staff. Staff? Consultants. Farm, say so farm, consultants. Yep. Reps. Uh, reps, like a uh, food rep or, or a you know, technical sales rep type thing from some of, the, some of our co-ops and our partners. Yep. I was going to say that no, you, none of you have an accountant. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Okay, accountants. And lawyer. And lawyers. Okay, now um, I think probably what we need is a, is a park at board because I won't, I'll tell you who I'll be focusing on today. What, what I'd like to focus on. I know about accountants because I was one and am, am still one. Um, farm consultants, I think it applies probably similarly to lawyers. Um, you know, what we've got to be careful about with reps and stock agents is they're trying to sell us something, you know, and they're not necessarily kind of part of our core trust, trust, trusted team. If you came on understanding your farming business, you'd know about trusted teams, feed, wouldn't they? Um, and, and the other thing with bankers, again, that's a complicated relationship, isn't it? Because they are an advisor, but they're also trying to sell you something. You know, they're trying to sell you another million dollars, you know? And boy, have we got a deal for you. Um, so, so it's a complicated relationship. But I think the things that I'm going to talk about today relate especially to accountants, lawyers, farm consultants, and to a degree bankers. Okay. What, if we're focusing on those, say these bottom three, what do you expect them to deliver? If you were giving this talk, what would your answer be to that question? What should these, these advisors to our businesses, what should they deliver? Good advice. Good advice? What's, um, what's the definition of good advice? Is it what we want to hear? Critical, unbiased, and bad news. Thanks. Yeah, critical. Just honest. Unbiased, yeah. yeah. <laughs> honest, yeah. Accurate. Cool. Accurate. What else? What else should they deliver? Compassion. Compassion? And an understanding of oh. their circumstances. Yeah. So I'll put compassion and um, and understanding. Integrity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Or the other thing that perhaps be there should be innovation and uh, overpower it and stuff that out yeah, that's right. If, if, you know, a lot of people use their advisors as a sounding board, and if all you ever get back is a kind of, yes, that's a good idea, or no, it's a bad idea, that's not, that's not the same, is it, as saying, hey, have you thought about this? Or do you know somebody down the road is doing this and it's working really well? And that, that some of that blue sky stuff could be really useful. So was that innovation, problem? Yeah. yeah. Okay, compliance might be what they're delivering. All right, I'll be really interested to see what you think of, of my take on, on these things. Okay, let's get into it. I haven't got my clicker because it, it didn't work. 
This is what we're going to talk about. Uh, I could I could recommend an accountant for Robin, and that might be a great fit for Robin, but it might be a terrible fit for Anna at the back of the room. So what I'm saying is, is good advisors, good business partners might deliver all this stuff, but it's got to suit the individual. So that's for where I think we're, today we're going to start with you. You've got to think about you. You've got to be clear what you're looking for. If you're, if you're going through the process of changing advisors or you know, you're new to business and you're starting afresh, I've got some ideas on how you might select people. Um, and, and then, before I get to what the business partner should deliver, I want to start on what you should deliver. Because if you do your bit, it's a heck of a lot easier for us as advisors to do our bit. And you'll get better value out of me if you've done your bit. Absolutely believe in that. Okay, um, and then business partner delivery, that was the purpose of my whole topic. Feedback and review, and we'll, we'll um, click into it. All right. So, this is Mount Nicholas Station um, off Wakatipi, but it looks more like a family from Auckland, doesn't it, than a, than a farming family. You know, I don't think the shoes have seen too much cow in here. But what I was trying to get at is, is, you know, for a lot of our sheep and beef farms, they're family farms, you know, and it's, it's really important that the business owners get together and think about some of this stuff. You know, as we go around the country, inevitably, not inevitably, quite commonly, the key business, the key partners in, in people's business, they've inherited. You know, we've taken over because that's who mum and dad have. You know, and if you've been through a succession, the worst piece person to be your accountant or your lawyer might be your dad's accountant or lawyer, you know? And so um, it starts with you. So, Hey, Kay, you couldn't work the slides for me, could you? That'd be a real you saving, you know. You, want it? Um, I, you know, I hate jumping around the stage and moving, <laughs> so you know it would allow me to keep still. Um, cool. Okay, it starts with you. Values. You know, like um, we we do work on the courses and when we're doing our business plan about really understanding what's important for you. Somebody mentioned integrity. You know, if, if integrity is really important to you, then you wouldn't want to be dealing with somebody that's a bit shady, okay? My old accountant said, if somebody's tricky in one area of their life, chances are they'll be tricky in other areas, you know? And, and I was talking to somebody the other day about, um, I did some work for a client and the IRD have made a mistake with the losses carried forward and I was saying, I think we need to go back to the IRD and say, hey, you've overestimated the loss carried forward. And he said, absolutely, because if the shoe was on the other foot, God, we'd be on the case, wouldn't we? You know, so it works both ways. And that kind of integrity. How often have you received a line of stock and there was one too many? You know, would you go back to the supplier and say, hey, you've undercharged us? You know, there's actually enough here. So I'm big on integrity. And that's about values. Um, really clear for you as a business to understand what your goals are and also what's your, where are you at in your business stage? Are, are you really new to business? Um, are you growing? I've called it, are you cruising? You know, or are you thinking about exiting? So that might have a bearing on the kind of advice that you need. Um, are there other owners? Do you have equity partners? You know, are you bringing in the next generation? And in your relationships with business partners, do you, want, do you want, say, your staff or family to learn by doing? You know, I've heard of really huge farming enterprises and their kids from quite a young age sit in at the boardroom table, you know, so they're observing what's going on. They see the robust discussions that you have with your advisors. Cool, thank you. Okay, what are you looking for? Toyota Corolla? or Range Rover. You know, it's horses for courses. And I've had heaps of people say to me, oh, you know, I've got a useless accountant. All he does is, is produce a set of annual accounts and I want him to be doing, you know, budgets and cash flows and succession planning. And I say, oh, how much are you pay? Oh, $1,200 a year. Well, you know, 
you're not gonna you're not gonna expect you're not gonna get a kind of um, Rolls Royce service on a on a Corolla budget. Okay, so it depends what you're after. Thanks, Lee. So what's your budget? Will they be part of your trusted team? As an accountant, I used to get really frustrated when I'd go and visit, say, at a client or we'd have a meeting with clients down on farm and I realised the banker had been there a week before. You know, like, why wouldn't we get together and have a combined meeting? We'll have a way better discussion. If you're ever talking about business structures and succession, it's pretty expensive to get Brett and I, as the lawyer and accountant, in the same room, but it's bloody productive, you know? Otherwise, I've heard people say, oh, the lawyer said, why have you got that structure? You know, oh, the accountant told us. But if you get, if you get a trusted team that are used to working to, with each other, and the banker as well, you'll get a way better result. Are you new to business? There you go. See that second to last one. Who, who, who would answer yes to that and who would answer no? Do you want to understand the advice? Does that sound a bit oxymoron? But, but it's like, I think there's some people out there I said, I said, just I was in Thai Happy um, on Monday, and I said, hey, has your accountant ever explained to you about livestock tax? And they went, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and maybe it had been explained, but it went over their head. Some people don't want to know. You know, it's kind of like you get the vet in and, and the cows are low on minerals. Some people just want to know, you know, just fix it, bet. You know, give them copper, give them selenium, whatever. Other people really want to understand the process, what's happening in the livers and the, and the biopsies and what's our target range and all of that, okay? So you need to be clear, you know, about that. How much do you want to understand? Same with tax planning. You know, do you want to know why your accountant has allocated you all 48,000 or 70,000 of income, you know, or you're just happy to leave it up to them? Basic input or cutting edge? That's Robin's point about innovation. You know, if we think about farm consultants, there'll be meat and three veg consultants out there, hey, who can do a feed budget for you and set up your winter stocking rate and your seed stocking and, you know, they prove your lambing percentage. And there'll be other people who are all over farm eggs, you know, and are working with, with top, top farmers that are really pushing the limit. So again, you need to be clear about what you're looking for and choose the right advisor. Okay. Once you've, um, once you're clear about what you want, then my advice is go and interview the prospects. So it's not them interviewing you. So in this case, you know, if this was a typical interview panel, hey, the woman's the, the, the interviewee, and these two are the panel. But in this case, the husband and wife are interviewing the accountant or the banker or the consultant at the front. You know, it's up to them to decide. Are we going to give our business to this person? Okay, so I reckon think about the other people that are in your trusted team. They're the best ones to ask. Who would they recommend? But again, it's horses for courses. And my friend uh, Matt, who's a banker, said to me, the best thing to ask would be, based on what you know about our business, can you give us two or three names? You know, so if you've got a banker that you're working with for four or five years and they understand all those things that we've just looked at, they might give you a different short list than they'd give to somebody else. So I think that's a good way to put it. Draw up a short list, check out their websites, they may not be taking on new clients, um, set up an interview and send in last year's information. So if you were looking at changing accountants, um, I would send a copy of last year's accounts. If you're looking at changing consultants, maybe send in the last report you got, or a feed budget. Um, I don't know what you do uh, for changing lawyers, you might send in your trustee and they'll throw up their hands in horror. Okay, <laughs> when you get to the interview, um, these are the things I reckon that you want to be thinking about. And I'm sure, I don't know what the system is fee for, for giving people notes, but don't feel like you've got to take all these notes. I'm sure I'm happy to, to um, you know, email them out. Does this person and the firm align with our values and goals, just like we talked about? You know, where does that sit? Um, especially, you know, for accountants, there's lots of accountants out there that kind of love being farm accountants because they're connected with the land and it's, you know, it's true wholesome stuff and, and that's all what New Zealand's about. But they've got, you know, five or ten clients. And, and 
I'm a bit biased because I was a specialist farm accountant, but to me, farm accounting is such a specialist area that even if the firm does other business, you know, the, the partner that you're dealing with needs to be all over this stuff. They need to be all over livestock tax, all over income equalisation scheme, you know, development, um, forestry rights. They need to be up with the play. They shouldn't be going to the master tax guy every time you come up with a question. You know, this should be their bread and butter. Um, how's that for a question? How do they like to work with clients? So you could ask them that. You know, and when people, when my clients or prospectives um, ask me this, I would say things like, um, I only work with clients that have got a budget and cash flow. Not interested, really, if you don't have a budget and cash flow because you're on another plan. Um, uh, I was a bit biased. I tend to only work with cash manager rural or, or, um, or uh, bank link. But anyway, um, I liked the clients that I had more contact with. You know, I like to work with clients that were growing. Um, I like to work with clients that, uh, you know, were targeting profitability. Field days, conferences, discussion groups, obviously a consultant, you know, you, you'd absolutely expect them to do that. But, uh, you know, people like Brett, you'll see them at discussion group or at, um, at continuing professional development courses. Which other professionals do they work with? Who's in their network, you know? If they've already got a relationship with your other professionals, that's fantastic. It makes a real difference. Um, and I guess that's a, that's a counter to the fact that these days you might have certainly an accountant in a different town, you know, with, with internet and all the rest of it. They could be in a different part of the country, but it's hard then for them to work with your other professionals. Similarly, how do you like to work with clients? You could ask this person, how can I get the best out of you? I spoke to a consultant in the car park of farmlands yesterday, um, as I was in the middle of writing my PowerPoint, and um, Richmond said to me that he went to a client and this guy was really well organised. He had everything lined up, he had his budget, you know, was up to date, his stock reconciliation made sense. Richmond said that client probably saved three hours of his time, of his consultant's time, compared to a disorganised client. So their discussion was going to be at a whole higher level and that person will get better value out of the consultant. If you come to me and you already understand a bit about livestock tax, you'll get way better value out of me because we'll be looking at the nuances and thinking about how can we really make this work? I suppose you might ask about charging. You, know, you wouldn't, want, wouldn't bother asking an accountant about that because they're all so reasonable. But, um, <laughs> but you might ask how they charge and, and you know, are there options in there? A lot of accountants now have got plans, client service plans, you know, where there's a fixed agreed fee or it's an upfront fee for the year. All right, preparation. I talked about that with Richmond. This is a family holiday. You know, I think there's three kids and two adults. God, they're organised, eh? But they've done the preparation. So, so I talked about Richmond and his clients. Um, the same, the same as a, for me as an accountant. If somebody is either setting up a meeting or, or even if we're going over the annual accounts, if they've emailed me beforehand with a list of questions, hey, we want to go over these things, or I've sent out the draft and they've come back to me and said, can you leave those accounts as draft, Lawrence? Because there's some things in here I really want to debate. Um, and that's the point. If your accountant sends you out a draft set of accounts, which everybody should do, and you should read them before your meeting, if you don't get back to the accountant, chances are, when you get there, say a week later, they'll all be beautifully bound, won't they, in colour and printed, and, you know, and all the tax returns will be done, and it's kind of a signing fest. Um, it's really hard. It's really, it's, it takes quite a bit of work if we decide to change that, you know? If we've put your extra stock onto herd scheme and you say, nah, I want to put them onto NSC, that change, you know, might only be 20,000, but it flows right through the accounts, you know, it affects the tax returns and everything. So to me, that's not a discussion about the draft accounts, eh? That's a fait accompli. So accountants probably hate me for this because they're trying to get the jobs out the gate, you know, and, and finish. But if you truly want to have a discussion, 
then ask the accountant to leave them as draft. Um, but be prepared, ask, uh, have those questions. As I say, you know, do your stock read, update your budget, and it makes a real difference. What else have we got? So this is your input. Be punctual. Certainly for accountants, when we're doing annual accounts, if we send you out queries and they're stuck in your junk folder for, for two weeks or a month or six months, that's hopeless. You know, like, yeah, it's, it's partly a courtesy thing, but it's also efficiency on your job because um, any accounting staff, they pick up a job, don't they, and they start it and they've got a query, they send it to the client. Of course, they've got to put that down. They like being busy, they're paid on how busy they are, so they pick up another job, oh, more queries. So, you know, some firms have a rule that you can't have more than five jobs open at once. The firms that don't have that might have 15 jobs open. So when you finally get back with those queries, you know, was that really um, repairs and maintenance on that Range Rover, or, or um, did you drop a you know, V8 in it or something like that? When you finally get back on the query, the person's got to pick up that job, you know, and think, oh, where was I up to? That's inefficient. It's going to cost you more. So respond to queries quickly. Share your values and business plans. I've had accountants around the country who say to me, God, Lawrence, I can tell the women that have been on understanding your business, A, they're a bit fired up, um, <laughs> and, and they come in with all these curly questions, which you've probably um, loaded them up with. But, they, but they've said, this is a guy, George, down in Alexandria, he said they're really motivated, they're over their business, they've got a business plan, and, and as an accountant, my ability to give them good advice, it's so much easier. You know, it's so much better. Um, debate strongly. Again, uh, Peter Alexander said to me that um, if, if you've got advisors that always agree with you, they're not good advisors. You know, they, you should be able to debate strongly. And Peter said to me, as a trustee of a trust, if he absolutely disagrees with something, then he will resign as a trustee rather than let it go through. You know, because like, that's his stand. Or he'll lose the client even potentially. Because if that's what you believe, that's what you believe. So we can debate, debate strongly, but we're debating the issue, not the person. It's handy if you pay your bills on time. You know, it helps our cash flow. Um, and if you're really happy with your any of these um, business partners, they might ask you for referrals, you know, which is something that costs you nothing but it's really good for them, it's really handy. Okay, this comes back to innovation. I, I call it delivering forward-looking advice. You know, we, we want to have a sense of what's over the horizon, all this women methane business. If that's an issue we're going to have to be grappling with, then your advisors need to be all over it. So, this is what I reckon now, I'm not finally answering the topic that we've got for Okay. Um, what should they deliver? Forward-looking advice, competent professional, <coughs> best practice in their industry. To me, that's about um, kind of innovation and some of the stuff here, eh? Honest and accurate. So, if you've got if you've got a farm consultant or an accountant or a lawyer, then I would expect them to be attending, you know, conferences, field days, continuing professional development. So they're right up with best practice. Now, I used to bag the accountants in, in Gisborne, and I got told off for that. And look, as I said, I was in Thai Happy. Sandra is going to hold me to account. <laughs> um, I was in Thai Happy on Monday, and I couldn't believe it. I picked up a set of accounts, and and we're looking at you know the stock trading account, and we've got all our figures down here. And this farm had four or five hundred thousand dollars worth of sheep, and in the accounts. We had four hundred thousand seven hundred and sixty-two dollars and twenty-three cents. I couldn't believe it. We're talking four hundred thousand. Why have we got the cents? It's materiality. You know that software was updated in nineteen ninety-seven, so this account a wee bit out of date. And the other thing that we've done, I won't tell you any names, but you know, say we've got a figure four hundred one two seven point three four. When you look at a number like that, he didn't have any commas. So I didn't know, was that 4 million or 40,000, you know? So, God, this is best practice. You know, as I say, this is updated about 20 years ago. That accountant needs to 
you know, spend some money, update their software, get rid of the cents and put in some commas. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a hobby for survive. Okay. <laughs> Timely delivery. Oh, don't get me started. Again, when we go around the country, and clients used to say to me, Lawrence, we're not that keen on paying tax, even though I told them to focus on the other 80%, you know, and not worry too much about the 20% that they pay. We're not that keen on paying tax, but what we hate even more is a surprise. You know, we've done our budget, things are chugging along, we've perhaps paid back some debt, we've bought some extra stock. The last thing we want is to get a surprise. I was with a banker all last week in the, in the Taumanui, and she was furiously organising emergency overdrafts for people to pay 7th of February tax. And I'm trying to work out what it was, and I think it must have been a March balance date, it was their third provisional, and they're a month late in paying their terminal. So here's a client chogging along, you know, might have had a $100,000 overdraft, and suddenly they need 40000 more to pay tax. And somebody else said to me, is that, I shouldn't say Irish, is that a bit, um, is that a bit backward to be borrowing money to pay tax? You know? And the sad thing is that this client might have taken their books into their accountant back in August or September or October, you know? And dare I say it, the accountant's been sitting on that job, it's been on the shelf um, for six months. And that is not timely delivery. And so, you know, if you're, we're going to talk about feedback in a minute, we'll cover that there. Regular contact, uh, the clients I like working with the most, we would have quarterly contact. Phone, um, Skype, or in person. How's it going? What's changed in the budget? What's coming up? Do we need to alter the prof tax? It was really good, worked really well. Newsletters, emails, you know, good, a good advisor will see an interesting article and they'll just flick it out on the email. Oh, Anna, I thought you might be interested in this. You know, that's great. And no surprises, Billy. How many of you would take your car to the mechanic and say, can you fix my car? Yep, yep, sure, we're really good at fixing cars. Can you tell me um, what's wrong, um, what it might cost, and, and when you might have it ready? Oh, no, no, we don't do that. <laughs> hey, so that's how a lot of accounts uh, and other people operate, you know, there's, there's surprises. So, okay. feedback and review. Look at this, read the, read the caption. Can you read it for those down the back? I've reviewed your salary and I think we're paying you too much. Now, luckily none of my clients said that to me, but I think that's the, that's the feedback that a lot of clients would like to give their advisors. Okay, people will move on. Um, so, if you're, if you're not happy, what we have seen, with the, with the service that you're getting from your business partners, I think the best thing to do is have a conversation. You know, chances are they might be a really good business partner or advisor, you know, but there's a bit of a breakdown in communication. And what they think you want is not what, um, what you're getting or vice versa. You know, so an open dialogue. I reckon it's good to do that annually. It's like a performance review. Have you heard of that 350-degree feedback? I'm not sure. Sorry, what's your name? Amanda. I'm not sure if Amanda does this, but but what I used to do in my firm is when I was having a meeting with clients, I'd ask my staff, hey, have you got any feedback for these clients? You know, on what was their coding like? You know? Are their records got cow manure all over them because they've been around the bottom of the ute, you know? Um, do they respond to queries in a timely manner? And vice versa, you know, I'd be asking the clients, hey, have you got any, any feedback on my staff? So that's 360 degrees, it's all around, both ways. And, and the same thing, you know, it's not unreasonable for an advisor to say, hey, if it, the situation came up, would you recommend me? And they talk about that net pr promoter score. Okay, how are we going for time? What do we do? We start 10 plus? Yeah, you know, that's all good. So this is my summary. Clarify your values and goals. Be clear on what you're looking for. Use your network to shortlist and then interview. Be prepared for meetings and share your goals. Expect timely, forward-looking and good value advice and feedback and review. 
next is discussion. Mm. Yeah. So really open to your your feedback to me. I'll take that on in, in an honest honest mm -hmm. way. What do you think? Have I missed the mark, or what is your experience of of working with business partners? Come on, Rob. Or oh, here back. Oh, sorry, I'm just not answering that question with another question now. What is your view? Um, and what is your experience of the traditional view that you should not have a lawyer slash accountant in the town that you live in? Oh, I think that's probably old fashioned. You know, I think it was probably because people thought that, that they would talk at the pub. You know what I mean? Or they do talk at the pub. Okay, well, that's, that should be included in the feedback because if that's happening, and you know, anybody here that's in a professional service firm, it is absolutely part of our employment contract that this is confidential information, and we have to be aware that that you know some people are really open with their figures, eh? and, they, and they, they share them at field days and things. Other people are very, very private, you know, and won't buy a new car because it looks like they're doing too well. Now, now, our staff in professional service firms should be absolutely sensitive about that, and if you ever hear a whisper. That that's not happening, then I'd be going straight back to the partner, you know, and chasing it up because that's not acceptable. And so my answer is, I was going to say in a perfect world, but I believe it's it's quite reasonable to to expect absolute confidentiality. And to me, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. You know, like I was saying about having a trusted a trusted team. I know. I know with several clients, you know, we've sat down with the lawyer, the accountant, maybe the consultant and the banker, and God, we've had a productive meeting, haven't we, Brett? You know, we've thrashed something out. It's an equity partnership or whatever. We've got everybody around the table. We already know how each other work, and so it's more efficient for the client. Any other comments? Well, my uh, folks um, on my annual accounts, it's normal practice that there's a disclaimer that everything from the pimples on their ass to the Head on their eyebrows, you know, are not counted. You know, they're not responsible for. Them. Yeah. You know, is that standard practice for accountants? Uh, it is because essentially, um, and Andrew will put me right uh, if I if I'm off here, but essentially, as chartered accountants, we are compiling the information that you provide to us, and so. It's quite a different engagement, they call it an engagement standard, you know, if you wanted us to do an audit on your books yeah. or comment on, you know, in a, in a retail business, you might comment on, they call it internal controls, you know, what's the chances of somebody um, slipping cash out of the till? Now, it's quite different, eh, in a farming business. But, um, so, so generally, we're not tasked to do that. So we're taking the information that you provide us and we're compiling it into a standard that fits um, the financial reporting standards. And interestingly, when you sign a tax return, like either the company tax return or you as an individual, effectively what you're signing is that you have interpreted the tax legislation and what you're claiming is, is deductible, you know, is allowable by the legislation and you've returned all income. So, of course, You've delegated part of that eh, to the accountant, but it's essentially it's on your head. Yeah. So it's CYA. Pardon? CYA. What's that? We're going to cover your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but look, I think, obviously, I think there'll be things that are exempt from that. You know, if, if we've made an absolute mistake, or if there's any um, kind of uh, misappropriation or dishonesty, you know, and, uh, and, most accountants are members of the um, Chartered Accountants Australia New Zealand, and so you've all always got a recourse against the professional body. You know, if you're not happy, even if you're not happy with fees, there is a sort of fee resolution service at the um, Chartered Accountants Association. Brett? Um, don't be scared to, to tell your professional what, what, what things interest you. you know, yeah. The situation the other day that was one of their parents, they were telling me that their parents going to a rest home. Well, the next day there was a really good article and, and, and stuff. About this time, really just not helpful, you know. Flipped it on. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Do you do you feel like you're getting good value from from your um, advisors? That's shaking head there. 
Tell me more. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, I think if if that's your situation, and this is so good to do as a couple, you know, you sit down and you kind of do your own performance appraisal like, on the service that you're getting, and dare I say it, you know, what's keeping you there? If it's a if it's a misguided sense of loyalty, then to me that it should be like this, you know, that that doesn't count, I've not that highly, do you know what I mean? In that there's always other clients out there and it's more important for your business that you've got the people that are right for your business. So then I'd be using that kind of selection criteria and um, and, and I, I say to people, think of the effort that you would put into employing a new stock manager, you know, or a major farm manager. It's a big decision, eh? And you really work through it, you draw up your person description and, and your attributes and all the rest of it. We should put at least as much work into choosing our advisors, you know, so it's a similar process. Yeah. And I don't think you should feel scared to change. Not at all. Because if they're not providing what you want yeah. to Yep. One of our fellow um, tutors at, at the AWDT, Margot, she's got a policy that every five years they have a really serious review, you know, of their key advisors in the business. And it's kind of a, are we going to keep them? Are we going to change policy? And that, you know, for them, that kind of refreshing works quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Any other, any other comments? Yeah. Yeah, and then they might choose to move on their business at a different stage or whatever, you know, and that they, they're looking for somebody else. I've also had clients leave because I wouldn't let them claim for their farm flex socks. <laughs> <laughs> legislation is actually quite clear about business and personal, right? And and you know they might be the hardest wearing Norseway socks that you can buy, but they're not protective clothing. And and they thought I oh, was an absolute, you know, whatever. Was that cat food? Yeah, yeah, the, the cats. That's part of weeding pests, isn't it? You know, they're doing their job. They wouldn't need feeding. Yeah, that's right. Because they're because they're eating the kids. You know what I mean? And so people quibble over the smallest thing. Sky TV. You know. Or the golf club subscription. Oh, I do lots of networking. You know, I've sold many a many a you over the over the 18th hole. You know, yeah, right. Um, so there's some things where the legislation is quite clear. There's other areas where there is discretion. You need to look at the legislation. A good accountant will have a sense of the case law, and then they will discuss with you. You know, do you want to take the risk of kind of pushing this? And if it's really really touch and go, um, I would get a specialist tax opinion, you know, from a specialist tax lawyer, and then we would put that to the client and we'd say, this is the opinion, which way do you want to go? And sometimes a criticism of accountants is that, oh, you're just, you know, you're just revenue collectors for the IRD. You're, you're, you're not working for us, you're trying to maximise our income. Well, my response to that is we are interpreting the legislation, you know, to the best of our ability. And if I've got a client or a number of clients who are really pushing for things, you know, there's black and there's white and there's this shade, big shade of grey in the middle, and they're really pushing for things towards the black side, and one of those got audited and it found an IRD favours, favour, then chances are IRD would come in and want to audit all of my clients or a whole lot of my clients. And that's not the sort of relationship that I want to have with IRD and that I don't want my clients to have. You know, so it's kind of not in anybody's interest. Um, <coughs> oh, we're over. Okay. Yeah. Hey, just before I finish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other thing is that, I probably didn't put this in my slide, I think all of these people have a responsibility around education. You know, they're providing you a service, but if you've been dealing with them for a year or two or three years, to me, your knowledge of that field should be greater after that time. You know, part of what they're doing should be educating them on 
why they're advising what they are, so that your knowledge increases and then you can get better value from them. Thank you very oh, much. Cheers, I'm sorry, wish we could bottle your enthusiasm for all things accounting. <laughs> yes. And I think for everyone in the room, there's an easy, at least a grand, to save after that talk. So let's go away, prepare, make it happen. Thank you very much. Thanks.